Okay, good evening and thank you guys for joining us for our advanced academics orientation and thank you to those of you joining us at home. Um, we are just hoping to give you a, an idea, a picture of what you can expect from the advanced academic coursework and workload as your student progresses through their years at Brenham High School. So tonight we're gonna go over some basics for each class, some expectations, and give each teacher that's here a chance to speak to you. And then when we wrap up, we'll have them spread out and you'll have a chance to go to them and ask some questions. Um, and those of you who are joining us virtually will be able to email your questions that you may have after the evening. Um, before we begin, I uh, just want to let you know that this is a very different year for us and our teachers are working incredibly hard, more than I think anybody can imagine unless you're in it to make this year successful for both our students who are coming face to face and those of us are those who are choosing to learn remotely. So um, we're asking for a lot of patience and grace with, and flexibility. Um, teachers may put something into place and then find out that it's not working and have to make adjustments. Um, on our end as administration, we are throwing changes at them all the time that they are adapting to. So if we weren't flexible before, we were qualified to be in Circus Soleil by the end of this because everybody is bending over backwards to make things work. So we really appreciate your patience and understanding. Um, so when you're gonna have a question, give them time. Time is a very precious commodity right now. And so if you email a question and you don't hear back within the hour, please know that if you get back, they get back to you within the day, they're doing well, they're putting in long hours. And so we're very thankful for the ladies that are here today um, and all of the ones who couldn't be here but are gonna be working with your kids day in and day out. And they've put together information to share with you that you can access on these flyers. So again, the one to your left, as you look at the screen and the top left is for the freshman coursework. And to, then to the right, we have one for the sophomore coursework if you have any um, students here who are taking advanced classes as a sophomore for the first time. Um, I'm gonna let you get an introduction from each of them real quickly because our virtual, um, those of us who are joining virtually are going to lose the webcam in just a second, so I'm gonna let them introduce themselves and then we're gonna switch over to the information that we're gonna talk about and that's what we're going to be seeing. Um, so I also wanna introduce our principal is here, Mr. Chandler, Mr. Joseph Chandler. Um, and my name is Erin Thibodeau and I am an assistant principal and I am the principal that works with advanced academics. So um, I can help you with questions as well. So when you begin emailing, then um, you can always reach out to me as well. Um, emails are the best, I think. Form of contact at this time, phone calls are hard for everybody to be available for right away, but that is um, one general expectation that we can um, put forth. And we can also go ahead, and I feel confident in giving you these general expectations for your student as an advanced learner. The coursework is rigorous. Um, there, it can be demanding at times on both their time and their effort. Um, we ask for students to really focus on time management, and that's an area that you can help your students. Uh, those little pokes and prods, if they're independent kids, I have a freshman myself, and she's always been very independent, but she's needed a few pokes and reminders, and it's just as simple as, hey, do you have any work for this class? Have you checked in on all of these things? Have you double checked? Another expectation that I'm really gonna focus on for this year is that everything that is coming in the way of communication from your teachers needs to be read carefully. Uh, again, I mentioned the time effort that's going into all of this or the time constraints that teachers are under. So when they put information out, a lot of the questions and emails and responses that sometimes we're getting are things that are out there for the students and they're just not reading through. So um, we're gonna ask that you help your students to know that if it's something that comes to them, that they read it thoroughly, um, and if there's a video, that they watch it carefully. Sometimes we have our earbuds in while we're doing this. I've, I've, I know with my own experiences that I didn't get it, I didn't understand it, but she was listening to her music while she was doing it, and then when we turn that off and try again, it works somehow. So if that is um, something, that is definitely something you can expect to see that work coming in on a consistent basis. So if they ever say, nope, no homework, you may wanna double check. Additionally, 
even when there's not a lot of work that needs to physically be completed, there's usually something that they should be studying. So time to um, get ahead or review things that they have been working on in class. Several of these classes are college level courses. At the end of them, they could earn college credit if they pass the AP exam. So just like a college course, for whatever hour you meet in class, there are several hours additionally that you should be studying, reviewing, and prepping at home. So those are things that you can expect with this. All of these students who are in advanced coursework are usually also very involved in other aspects of student life, which is wonderful. We want well-rounded students who are involved, um, but that is difficult sometimes. So helping them manage their time will be a, uh, something you can do. Additionally, communication. Reaching out to your teachers and helping them um, know what problems you're having or what questions or concerns you have and then giving them a chance to respond to you uh, will be greatly appreciated. All that being said, uh, on our, our district-wide, we do not at the high school for any course load except late work. So being on top of what's coming up is very important because we don't accept the work beyond the due date. As you're in advanced academics, that becomes even more important simply because those are the students who are usually, by their senior year, competing for those top spots in our graduating class. So these teachers, even if they wanted to, don't have the room or the flexibility to bend and accept something from a student if it's not done on time out of fairness to all the other students in the classes. So those are just some general things and now I'm going to let you um, hear a brief introduction from each of the teachers and uh, then we'll switch over for our people joining us virtually so that they can see the same information that you're going to get here. Good evening, and thank you guys so much for coming and taking the time this afternoon to see us, visit with us, ask questions. But I'm Erica Ross, and I teach pre-AP biology. I'm Casey Eshte, and I also teach pre-AP biology. I'm Amy Siebert, and I teach advanced geometry. I'm Kate Shaw, and I teach advanced algebra one. I'm Katie Cloud, and I teach pre-AP English 1. Hello, I am Madison Ruiz, and I teach Advanced World Geography and AP Human Geography. And I believe I'm starting us off. Am I correct? Okay. Um, at this time on the screen, Mrs. Thibodeau is getting the pamphlet. So that QR code that you have on um, either your phone or the QR code that is on the bookmark that you received when you walked in, this is the information that we have for each of the classes. It, it will have the same type of information, but applied to the different classes. So you'll see the teacher's remind codes. So at this time, if you have not joined a teacher's remind, we highly recommend that you do that. That is one of the best ways that uh, we teachers are able to communicate with our students with expectations, assignments, and so forth. We then move into the homework expectations. So uh, each of us will be talking about how we as a teacher in the classroom, the expectations that we have when it comes to homework. Next, you'll see the late work policy. We're all pretty much the same, but we'll talk about like specific due date times that we have for our class. Then we have our test expectations, followed by tutoring time, and then academic honesty. So those are the um, items that we will be talking about individually and applying to our class. So for me, for Advanced World Geography and AP Human Geography, I have both of the remind codes there. And then the homework expectation is the same. For both classes, uh, students will go to the Learn post in their Google Classroom, and they will find the Nearpod for that chapter that we have. And within that Nearpod, we have um, a timeline that says, you know, on Tuesday, September the 10th, you have to do slides one through five, and then Wednesday, September 11th, and so forth, right? Um, 
so the students will have nightly homework. They will go to the same Nearpod. They'll go to the slides that are assigned. They will listen to the pre-recorded audio or they'll watch the video and then they'll be taking notes in their geographical notebook. It is important that the student does their homework the day before they come to class because when they come to class, we will be working with application. So everything that they learned at home, we will be applying in class the next day. So if they get behind in their homework, they're now gonna become lost and confused with items that we're covering in class. For late work for my class for both AP Human and Advanced World Geography, my deadline is 11.59 p.m. So students have until 11.59 p.m. to make sure that their exit ticket is done for the day, um, as well as any of the practice uh, and check items that we had. Students will have class time to work on that. We have anywhere from 20 to 30 minutes that we're working on it in class, and then what they don't finish, they finish for homework that night and submit it in by 11.59. For test expectations, for advanced world geography, students, uh, if they are remote learners, will need to sign up for a 50 minute block in the testing center um, as their test will only take 50 minutes at that time, same as face to face. Uh, the students will be given a multiple choice exam that is covered just in that one class period. For AP Human Geography, however, it will look different. They'll, the remote learners will have to um, Schedule for both the 50 minute block and the 30 minute block to cover their multiple choice and FRQ. In face to face, tests take two days. One day is for um, multiple choice, and the second day is for FRQs. For tutoring times, my face to face students are welcome to come into my room starting at 7 15 and going to um, the time of the bell when it rings at 7.38. Students are also able to come in my room and work on a Chromebook. So if they need to work for, it for another teacher, get work done, they're more than welcome to come in my room and do that. And then after school, I'm available from 3.15 to 3.45. And then for my remote learners, um, please just email me any questions or concerns that you have and we can schedule a Google Meet, um, typically after school, because that's when I have more time to meet with remote learners and I can solve any problems that you you might have. When it gets to academic honesty, we do a lot of projects um, and research papers, and so students will need to make sure that they're using MLA citations. Plagiarism will not be allowed, and I am very strict on the late policy, so it is due at 11.59. I do not accept late work. Um, and so if they have cheated on something because they need to get it done real quick and they, no. We were able to see editing, um, edit history on our Google Docs and on our products. And so we can see if cheating has occurred and we have that documentation. One thing I do want to talk about for AP Human Geography, that is a college level course. So on Tuesday, May 4th, at noon, the students will take the AP exam and in July, around July 4th, they receive their results and if they've passed the exam, they actually earn three hours of college credit. With that being said, we have to make sure that the rigor in class meets those expectations of college. So your students, your children will be expected to uh, read, write, and collaborate critically at a college level. And that is my goal throughout the year that I am preparing them to do so that when we get to our AP exam in May, they'll be able to, able to master the exam. One question I typically get about the AP exam is um, does it affect high school GPA and it does not. So when the student takes the AP exam in May, when they get the results in July, if they did not pass, it does not affect their high school GPA, nor does it affect their college GPA. And if they pass it, it still doesn't affect their high school GPA, and it won't affect their college GPA. It goes just in as three hours earned towards credit. Um, so that pretty much covers everything for Advanced World Geography and AP Human Geography. Um, again, we'll be here um, after we go through our presentation. So if you have any questions specifically about my class, please come see me. Um, I look forward to meeting you since we didn't get to have open house and I didn't get to meet the parents. So I look forward to meeting you and answering any questions that you may have. Thank you. So thank you guys for being here today. Um, I'm Katie Cloud. I teach pre-AP English 1. Um, the thing about pre-AP English 1 is I'm preparing these students for two tests 
even though they don't take an AP course in my class this year, um, they still are responsible for taking that EOC in the spring. And as of now, TEA is saying that everybody is taking it. We're hoping and praying something happens, but you never know. So I am preparing those, those students for two different tests. So um, I'm not gonna go through this, you know, point by point, um, these things, the homework ex expectations. So the students in my class, sometimes they do have homework, sometimes they don't. Um, if they do, I have created um, the check on the regular Google Classroom. But um, after I had a sweet kiddo come to me with a post-it note with all of his assignments for all of his classes on that post-it note, I thought, let me go ahead and make an additional Google Classroom just for my fourth period or for my um, pre-AP kids, so that they can see when something is due and all that kind of stuff. So for the face-to-face -face students, there is an additional classroom that I've created for them. It has all of the assignments that they will need to complete. Um, they are not required to complete my check every day. It is different for my class. Um, if they are required to complete it, I will move it to that face-to-face -face classroom that I've created for them. Now, as I've told the students in the classroom, if we are to go remote, they do have to shift back to that other classroom. Everyone understood it, um, but I did want to make that point to you guys. So, Lord willing, we don't go remote, but if we do, those students are supposed to shift back to that original class that they were in. But the face-to-face -face, um, classroom, it does say F2F to clarify that that is the face-to-face -face classroom. Um, so if that homework is not posted in that Google Classroom with a date and time that it is due, then I will send out a remind to you. Um, I don't think that it's a bad idea and I don't think that it's money wasted if you get your student a planner to put all of their assignments in. Um, because if they're taking multiple AP courses, there are a lot of assignments that they're going to be responsible for. If you don't want to purchase one, Google Calendar, we use it. Um, it's free. The kids have it through their Gmail. So they can always post things to that calendar, um, and it is a free resource for them. So, yes, I would recommend that as well. But somehow or another, they need to be planning um, those assignments, especially if they're in multiple, multiple classes. So... Um, that's the homework expectations. If you're face-to-face, -face, it'll be in Google Classroom. If it's not in Google Classroom, I will send out a remind. Everything for the kids is written out on my board every day underneath my essential question. So like today, they have three homework assignments. They have a test tomorrow over prefixes. In case you didn't know, they have a test tomorrow if they're in pre-AP English. Um, but they have a test tomorrow along with an assignment that's due tomorrow with that prefix test. So that will go out via, rem I mean, that will, that prefix list is in Google Classroom. And as soon as I leave here tonight, I'm going to send out a remind, letting, reminding that there is a test. But that remind is going to be a good component too. Late work, it's the same uh, as everybody else. I don't accept late work. Um, we, our time is precious. And students need to understand that they need to turn that assignment in. One problem that I'm running into that I would love to have everybody's help with is when you post something to Google Classroom, you have to click the turn in button. If you do not click the turn in button, it, it shows missing. So I even got a reminder from a student last night at 630. And a good thing I was on my computer doing some assignments. But I, she said I turned it in. And I went to it and it said missing. And I took a picture of the screen and I sent it to her. She had attached them and not turned it in. So please, please, please tell your students, tell your kiddos, click the turn in button when they do that, okay? Um, if not, it is late. So that's, that's gonna be an automatic zero. You can't make up zeros in my class. You can make up failing grades because at least the kid attempted to do the assignment and they attempted and didn't do it correctly. If they scored below a 70, I'm all about making sure that student comprehends something they're not getting because they turned in an assignment that it was less than um, appropriate. So I really need that work to understand so late work's not accepted. Uh, test expectations, face-to-face -face students are expected to um, take the test in class. I don't send any testing home. 
Um, the only exception might be a paragraph in an essay, and that's it. Um, if that's the case, I will send that out via remind to you to let you know. But face-to-face -face students will take all tests in class. If a face-to-face -face student is not there, and I've stressed this to the kids, I'm, I'm not their mom. I'm not going to go chase them down and tell them, you were absent, do your work. They have to be responsible and come to me and ask me for their late work. Likewise, if they were absent on the day of a test, they need to come schedule with me a time to come in before or after class to take that test, not during class. Class time is going to be used for instructional time. So that test will have to be made up afterwards. I'm, I'm going to say face-to-face -face students need to schedule before and after school, not during the testing time for remote so that we can keep those remote students open. I don't have a problem staying late for my face-to-face -face kiddos if they need to come in and make up a test. And I know the Washington County Fair is coming up next week, so it's going to be something that we're gonna, I'm going to need to do. I've already gotten like three or four emails from kids, which is fine. I don't mind doing that. Um, tutoring times. My conference period is first and seventh period. If the students are able to come to me, they can with a pass from that teacher. Um, other than that, after school, any day, as long as that student comes and tells me that they are coming to me that day or schedules a time, I'm available any time before or after school. But I just need to know because sometimes there are meetings, like today we had a meeting, so I couldn't be there for a student and she showed up after school without letting me know. Luckily, I had just a little bit of time to help her out and then I had to run. But it would help me out if the student would come schedule that meeting with me and let me know. Um, I'm available from 7 till, I think our first bell rings at 7.38 for students to go to class. I'm available at that time. I'm available after school. I'm usually here till around 4, so I'm after school as well. Just make sure that student comes and talks to me. Academic honesty, no cheating whatsoever. I don't accept it. Um, my goal is to educate a student, and I can't educate a student if I don't know what they're capable of. And when somebody cheats, I don't know what they're capable of. So that cheating um, is gonna automatically be a zero. And if two parties are involved, both parties will receive a zero and you cannot make that up. Um, there is, my classroom is full of collaboration. And at times, like today, they did an assignment that they collaborated with their group on. I allowed them to turn in an assignment that was the same as their group because they were talking and I saw that interaction between them. But only when I tell them that is allowed will I accept that assignment. And they, that will be very clear to the students. Um, we will use MLA citations when we do a research paper. Um, they will begin using MLA headings starting next week. So that should take care of plagiarism. Um, I will expect them to understand, and I'll, I'll show them how to do it, but I'll expect, expect them to give me MLA citation any time that they have um, documented somebody else's work. So the rest, if you have any questions, I'll see y'all after. Again, thank you so much for coming, and the best way to get in touch with me is email. I am there by phone, um, but most of the time you're going to have to leave a message, and I'll call you back. But email is the easiest and best way to get in touch. Hello, I am Casey Ashe, and I teach pre-AP bio. Um, I'm gonna be the old lady up here, put my glasses on, because I can't see this in front of me. But I'm not gonna go through everything on the sheet, because you all can read, so I just wanna touch some high points um, that's specific to my class. Um, my Remind code is on here. I really encourage you to join the Remind. I'm gonna be adding a resource document that is going to be important for you because it's going to link you to everything, everything for my class. My calendar, my, um, my Google Meets links, my um, videos that I've made, tutorials, kind of just generic tutorials. It links you to the district's video tutorials. Uh, it's just a lot of information. And when you have the information, that helps me. So when you, need, um, when you need to know when a test is coming up or you've got, your, you know your child has a doctor's appointment, 
you can go there and look uh, for yourself at the calendar. Right now I have the calendar set to till December. It's reasonably set in stone. This year, um, I don't know if anything's set in stone, so, um, it, but there won't be a lot of fluctuations um, with it. So please join the Remind if you haven't, and, and when that document comes through, I would encourage you to go in and kind of peruse through it and, and bookmark it because anytime you need anything for my class, that's probably where I'm going to direct you to go because there's so much information there for it. Um, if you are a remote learner, I don't know if I have any remote parents, I do have a separate Google Classroom for the remote learners and then each period for face-to-face -face has their own, so I have like a lot of Google Classrooms, but if you are a remote learner, there's very specifics. Uh, you're going to be getting more information coming through technology at you. Uh, a lot of, obviously, a lot of online stuff. The face-to-face -face learners, I'm pretty much doing my face-to-face -face like normal. Um, there, there's going to be times when they have to turn in stuff, but science, it's really hard. Science doesn't lend itself to... Um, I mean, we're hands-on, so we're doing as close to normal as, I, as we can be in 2020. I don't know if that's even a thing in 2020, but um, it's going to be pretty, pretty normal for, for the face-to-face -face learners. But the remote kids, um, and then if you're absent, uh, if you are a face-to-face -face kid that's absent, you can access that remote lesson plan for the day. Um, and all of that, like I said, is in this going to be in this document. You go to the calendar, you click on the date, and it, it pops open for you. And it's very, um, it's very self-explanatory. I make videos, you know. So anyway, um, the only thing that, um, I mean, everything up there, you can read that. You know, the no late work, all that. Um, I recognize some faces, so I know I've had some older siblings, and I mean, I'm a stickler for late work. I do not accept it. Um, and the one thing teaching this course for almost 20 years that I've learned with freshmen is there's a transitional period that there right now, there's some kids that um, have taken all advanced classes all through junior high. They've always done well, and then they get to high school, and it's just like bam. Um, and they don't know what hit them. It's it, you know, it's not. You don't even know if it's if it's the rigor of the courses. Is is it their extracurriculars? Because the coaches are just as demanding as us teachers are. You know, is it that they're just the content is too hard? So there is a transition period, and that tends to freak us mamas out. Um, and so, you know, when you get the progress report, if it's lower than what they normally would, would make, you know, if they've never made a B before and now they have a 78, um, don't freak out. Uh, just know that it, it, there's a transition period where they have to, they have to learn all of our procedures and, um, that is the best advice I'd give to, to, to you all as the parents, to having two of my own children that have gone through advanced classes. It's just give them a little time to get their, their wheels turning and get their feet under them because um, some of them are just in shock. Like they don't even know they're in shock yet because we're still doing preliminary stuff. But here in the next couple of weeks, they're going to start experiencing their first round of tests, and they might have two or three tests on the same day. And I mean, it, it, it can, they can get overwhelmed very, very, very quickly. And so we try to help them through it, but at the same time, we're not lowering that bar, that expectation, and that can seem harsh for them. Um, if, and then there's some kids that just, they, they don't need the transition. They, they adjust very well. So it just depends on, you know, your student. The one thing that I want, one more thing that I want to talk about is in pre-AP bio, we don't do science fair at the high school level, but we do require them to do an IRP, which is basically a research paper. Uh, I'm very well aware that they haven't formally been taught how to do a research paper, so it is very structured what we want them to do. Uh, they have a timeline 
that it walks them through all of these due dates for this first this fall semester primarily this is going to be something they are doing completely out of class um, if I have a 30 minute you know here and there then it might be a day that I say we work on it but for the most part you need to know that it is completely out of class. Um, again, they have a handout, or at least my, my remote kids don't yet because I was trying to ease them into it. So they will be getting that here in the next few days. But um, as each deadline approaches, we will talk about it. Like the first deadline is just, you know, what is their topic? Well, then the second one is to produce an outline. Well, Many of them don't even know how to produce an outline. They don't even know what an outline is. We go over that. So I will teach them what I'm expecting. So just know that um, I know that they don't know how to do that. And we're going to walk them through it. We're going to take baby steps. And then their English teachers will take care of uh, a lot of it next semester as well. So um, I'll answer any uh, specific questions that you have. But um, like I said, just read through the information and join my remind um, if you can, because all that information, I'm going to put that in, uh, in there probably tomorrow as far as that link to all the other links. So, OK? OK, and I'm Erica Ross, and I teach pre-AP as well. And Ms. SJ and I, we collaborate daily, sometimes multiple times a day whether it be to cry or you know what whatever at this point but we we do have and hold the same expectations in our classrooms and we do the same assignments and they're graded on the same standards so everything that she just said applies in my classroom as well except I do have a different remind code so if you are in my class which I see a couple out there um, that will be a different remind code but everything else applies the same the only thing I do want to add is that biology is a tested subject so at the end of the year there will be an end of course test on strictly biology and with the honors kids it's not so much um, focusing on passing the test but we're trying to push them to that distinguished recognition level so that's what we focus on with our end of course exam for the freshmen and if you have any questions email really is the best way um, as far as mornings Miss SJ is here most mornings um, I'm not gonna lie I have three kids and sometimes have to drop off at three campuses so um, it can be a struggle but I try to be here when I can however if one of the students needs to is doing homework and needs to come check it before in the morning, they can always go to Ms. SJ or send me a remind that evening to let me know, hey, I'm gonna be there, can you please meet me? And then Ms. SJ has Monday and Wednesday afternoons for tutorials, and I have Tuesdays and Thursdays. So every afternoon there is a resource, no matter whose class you're in, that they can go to for help. So thank you. I forgot. I am not a big remind user. I'm going to send you the link and you're going to have all the information, but I'm going to tell you that I forget to send out the reminds. So when there's a test, probably not going to get a reminder that, hey, there's a test tomorrow, but the calendar is there, so it's all on there. So I just want you to know you're not going to get a lot of reminds from me. <laughs> just don't be mad. All right, so I'm Amy Sieber, and I teach advanced geometry. Um, I don't send a lot of reminds out either, but I do like for my students and parents to sign up for it because it's just a way of, to communicate with me, to text uh, me when they have questions at night or whatever. So um, a lot of I had the algebra teacher, Ms. Shaw, is out here as well. A lot of our stuff is the same. So I'm going to go through mine pretty much, and she'll could then just come in and kind of say her things that are different with her homework and such. First off, with the geometry, we do not have an EOC, yay. Um, but if you, I have, my remind is up there as well, like I said. So my homework expectations, just like theirs, no late work is um, going to be accepted. Now, their homework each night, and I do have a calendar, an assignment calendar on my Google Classroom under each unit. I'll put one out there. Um, and I'd gotten the idea for Mrs. Ruiz because she, she forgot to say it, but she sends out through a mind an assignment calendar for the week. And so mine is kind of for the whole unit and it's on Google Classroom. Um, they are expected each night at home to, there's some videos to watch and some notes to fill in. Um, and then when they get to class, we'll immediately get into, if they've done their work, they'll, we'll get into the assignments. And if they will spend the, 15, 20 minutes that it is, takes at home to 
to do that, to watch the videos and do their work, they should get done with all of their assignments in class. Um, my class, all of my assignments are put in through Google Forms, typically Forms, some, some kind of digitally. Um, so if they, after they uh, submit the Google Forms for my class, they can go back and edit their response if they missed anything. They can look at it and edit it. However, it is due if they try to submit anything after 7.45 the next morning, it's done. So um, any edits after that or just submissions, it's going to be, you know, they can't change it at that point. Um, I'm available most mornings, Mondays, I can't do it, but most mornings I'm here, so 7.15, uh, they can come up. And then I'm here till about 3.45, 3.50 each afternoon if they need to come in for um, for tutoring after school as well, or just to use a Chromebook if they need to do that. If they need to come in and submit anything on the Google, on the Chromebook, they can come in and use that for my class or any other class. Um, I don't. I think that's really about about it. They just. I really. They need. I mean, like I said, if they watch those videos, if they do their stuff, I will help them all day long. I will bend over backwards. So I really want them to try to take initiative there's a lot going on it's so different and I know that so they are having a hard time some of them are having a harder time adjusting but it's all on Google Classroom if they'll just go look all right and just please let me know if you all have any questions after this okay I'm Kate Shaw for advanced algebra pretty much the same thing as her um, we have our first test tomorrow um, I send out it's stuck to my ring oh, well um, I send out a review video well, it's on Google Classroom, so they can watch me review them tonight. I really would like them to do the review by themselves first and then watch my video going over it all so they can see their mistakes. Um, we are an EOC tested course. We'll take our EOC in May. Um, tutoring is after school on Tuesdays and Thursdays. They can stay hmm, till five if they would like. I think that's pretty much all I needed to add. Oh, photo math. So I'm a stickler on phones if your child has me. Um, Photomath is an app that does the problems for them. Um, if you would look at their phones and maybe delete the app, that would be very helpful. Um, you can get it on your phone and you can check their homework every night and make sure they're doing it correct. But if you see it on their phone, please delete it. It would help us out a lot. Photomath. Mm -hmm. So in, their, in class, I do not let them have them, their phones on them because they'll try to sneak it and take a picture of the problem and get their answers. So I'm a big stickler on phones, I'm sorry. Okay, thank you for being here. Um, I wanna thank our teachers again. Uh, that's a lot of information and I was steady taking my own notes as well. Um, they're going to spread out now, so I'm gonna give them a second to get to where they're going. Again, we're gonna sign off with our um, stream that we're doing right now. And if any of you are joining us virtually, please submit your questions to your teachers uh, via email. Uh, again, thank you all for being here, and as you have questions, I'm going to stay up here, so if you have any questions from the administrative side, you can uh, make your way down this way. Otherwise, they're going to spread out so that we can stay as socially distanced as possible and safely get all your questions answered. Thank you again. <laughs>